Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Bobby here. It's uh, 10 till 4 on Wednesday. Hump day! Hump day! So uh, I, was, uh, I was getting a workout in today, and I'll briefly discuss what I did. Uh, what's up, Kim? So yesterday, I did a 5K, right? I did a 5K. And for those who know me, know I don't run. So when I posted that in one of our, our, our Better Than Yesterday groups, I didn't get a response like I thought I would of, of, of shock, of awe, or whatever. So I had to reveal that it wasn't a typical 5K, right? So I didn't do, I didn't run five, I didn't run, what's up, Jay side? I didn't run 3.1 miles. I didn't do a, because you guys know me, I don't believe in running for fitness, right? So I did a 5K, but it wasn't what you guys think a 5K is. I did a round that had four sets of jump ropes, right? A hundred each sandwiched by four ab exercises, hanging abs, mountain climbers, ab rollouts, and incline, decline weighted sit-ups, right? Each round, hey Mafa, each round was 400 jump ropes total and a hundred um, uh, ab exercises total. So I did 10 rounds of that. So in total, it was 4,000 jump ropes and 1,000 abdominal exercises. So I call that 5K, get it, 5,000? So that's my BTY 5K. So uh, I posted that, I think about an hour and 20 minutes, hour and 30 minutes. So I posted that and nobody even commented on it. No one was even, even, even amazed at it. No one was impressed. And I get kind of frustrated because people aren't impressed with my shit anymore. And I almost feel sad about it. So um, I move on because it ain't for you guys. This is for me. But I do I do appreciate the occasional pat on the back, right? So I move on. Today's Wednesday. So Monday, I did, I did all my body parts. I did 100 rep drop sets, which I'll include in a post, right? Every body part, 100 reps. So yesterday, I did some cardio and some abs. So today is kind of a fun day, right? I already hit my whole body. I already did my abs. Now I can just do whatever, right? So I'm in the shower, but I want to get some work in so I can take tomorrow off. There's nothing feels better than a Thursday after you done grinded Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That day feels great. So looking forward to that, I wanted to get something in today that warranted me feeling good tomorrow on my day off. And then Friday, if I do all that right, Friday's a real bonus. So literally, God sends me, sends me workouts. It's crazy. I'm in the shower. I'm thinking about what I'm going to do. And this, this, is, this is literally like five hours later because I get up at 4, 4.15. I didn't feel well this morning, so I was late to my classes. But I'm up at 4.15, and my workout isn't until 10.15, 10.30. So six hours ahead of time, God sends me my workout. And I had not done deadlifts yet. I've been trying to do deadlifts every week because they burn a lot of glycogen in your body. They're, they're one of the best ways to burn through fuel. Better than running, better than elliptical, all that stuff. So I wanted to do deadlifts, but I didn't want to go super heavy. Right? So I concocted this idea in my head. I was going to do, or in my head, I was going to do 20 deadlifts at 230 pounds. Well, actually, I didn't know the weight. I just I just knew it wasn't going to be 300, what I've been doing recently at my peak of the weights I use. And so I knew it, I didn't want it to be that because I wanted to do a lot of them. So um, I said, I'm going to do 20 deadlifts and 10 burpees. Right, that's one round. And my idea was to do 10 rounds of that. So 300. I like doing these cool things. So 300, like the movie... You know, I get into my Leonidas mindset. What's up, Kim? Get into my Leonidas. So 300, right? Sounded good. So 20 deadlifts and 10 burpees, right? 30 reps total for 10 rounds, right? So um, so while, while I'm teaching my classes, I'm looking at the weights that I'm going to use. I'm thinking about it. And I like to mention it, right, out loud. Because with me, if I, I train by myself. So 
I push myself. So one way to make sure I do what I say I'm going to do or want to do is, is I put it in the atmosphere. I put it in the universe. So I tell my, my classes, I'm going to try this, guys. And more times than not, I don't really know how hard it's going to be. Right? I don't really know uh, I can finish it. Either either period or in the time that I have before going to my next appointment. So I have an hour and a half window to get my work in from 1030 until about 12 when I go to my corporate account. So I don't always know. But when I say it, it at least makes me try it. Because now I'm accountable to somebody, to the universe, to my class, to whoever. So I think I might have told somebody today, or maybe I didn't, um, that I was going to do that. So sure enough, it's it's ten, it's ten twenty, and it's my time to work. And what's beautiful, what's beautiful about about me teaching you guys things is that I have to live it. So I I have to be ready to get my workout in at ten thirty a.m. on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's my only window to really get a great workout in, right between my corporate classes. Right on Tuesday and Thursday, I can get up early and come in before my other corporate class, but my windows are finite, just like yours are. So I can't, I I can't wait for my body and my mind to peak and feel perfect to work out. When ten thirty hits, it's time to go. Just like when Saturday afternoon at twelve o'clock hit, it was time to play a game. My body had to be right. Just like that person you love watching perform in music when they come to town. At 7 p.m. at Oracle, right, they have to be ready to go, whether they feel good or not, right? So I condition and train my body to be able to do that. And so when I tell you guys you have to do that and you can do that, it's because I do it, right? And so sure enough, 1030 came around. I taped my wrist up. I got ready to go. What's up, T? I got ready to go and I get to it, right? I like to, to keep a timer. So I, I, I use the app the timer app, the stopwatch app on my iPhone. And when I do like 10 rounds or something, I'll, I'll do, I'll set my stopwatch and I'll do a split every round so I can see how long the rounds take. And then number one, it gives me an idea if I can finish it, right? So if I say I'm gonna do 10 rounds of this, I have an hour and a half to do it. And the first round takes 11 minutes, I'm gonna, uh, I won't have enough time. So I know that. But I also use those, those previous rounds as a gauge to make sure I'm pushing through. So I use that that timer and then I'll get a screenshot of it, I'll save it for later, and I'll keep a record of that, right? So I get my phone out and I go to work, right? I warm, Actually, I warmed up first with a 25 to five um, circuit that I forgot about. That was jump ropes, uh, straight leg deadlifts, and just squats, light squats, 60s. So I, I do 25 of all of them, or 25 times times four for jump ropes, or times 10, sorry, for the jump ropes, and then 25 to five for the straight leg deadlifts and the squat. So that warmed me up, right? So I didn't get into deadlifts cold. So now it's time to start, right? And I'm going, I'm going at 230. So 230 pounds on the trap bar deadlift. I'm gonna do 20 deadlifts, 10 burpees, 10 rounds. Right, 20 deadlifts, 10 burpees for 10 rounds. I have my phone out. I'm gonna I'm gonna lap each each round and track it. Right? So I get to it, right? And my goal when I do these, the lighter weights, is I'm trying to hit 20 without stopping. Right? I'm trying to hit 20 without stopping. Uh for as many rounds as I can. So I get to it first round, I bang out 20, boom, 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 boom. 20, bang them out. Right, right away, I bang out ten burpees. I do that round in like two minutes. Right, I'm feeling good. Now I rest because now I'm tired. So the next round I start again, twenty reps, boom, 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 without stopping. Then I bang out ten reps of burpees. Right now I'm at round two. I'm under five minutes. I'm at four something. So I'm look, I'm looking good. I'm feeling good. Right, round three, same thing. Boom, 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 boom. I get to 15, now I'm getting tired, right? I don't put it down, I bang out five more, right? Then I have to wait, because now I'm really tired before I hit my burpees, right? So I, I wait a second or two, I bang out 10 burpees. Now I got round three. Now, 
I, I'm questioning <laughs> why the hell I thought of this, why I thought of this workout, right? In my head, I'm always thinking, I can't wait to post this. I can't wait to tell somebody what I did. So in the moment, I think about that. But what also came to me was a story that I, I've told before, but I often pull this story out to help to help me get through stuff and to help me teach people to get through stuff. Now, mind you, my boy Chris is there, right? Chris is our lackey. He'll probably, he'll probably pop in here. Um, he's one of my students but and a friend, and he a bad dude. I mean, he big, strong. I mean, he's one of those guys that, that you probably have a friend, a friend or two that make you feel insecure when you're around him, right? He a man, I call him a mannequin. He big, 6'4", I think he is. You know, he's he's getting lean through my teaching. You know, I'm making, I'm sculpting him into like this statue. Uh, but he's there. I'm like, man, why don't you go home? Because part of it is when I when I create these things in my head, even though I rarely quit and don't finish, I know I can stop if I want to. Especially if I don't tell anybody about it. Right? I can I can go through and just pretend I I something happened. What's up, MJ? What's up, Oscar? I didn't make it. So the fact that he's there, the fact that I told him what I was doing, now I'm really on stage. Right now I really gotta 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 step up. Cause you know, we are all of us men, whether we admit it or not, whether we let people strip us of it, we lions. Right, Richard? We tigers. And when we are amongst people that we respect, we got we gotta bring our A game up. That's why I love having guys in my class. I don't I don't I want guys in my class who are big and strong. Right? That makes me up my game. Right? But it's hard. So when he's there, I'm like, damn, I gotta finish this damn set. So now I'm on round four. I'm on round four of ten, right? Of twenty deadlifts at 320 and 10 burpees for 10 rounds. I'm on round four. Now we had about eight minutes, I think it is. So now I'm like, man. And it reminded me of this story when I was when I was young, young, right? So I'm an army brat, right? So my dad moved around the country, the world, really, uh, my whole life, right? I was born in North Carolina, then Italy, Germany, Hawaii, Washington, New Jersey, Texas, and finally California, right? So in Washington State, right, I was about 12, I think I was. Uh, we were there for three years. Right, going into my to my teenage years, right. So every summer at, in Washington, we would go to this lake, right, and and we would have fun, right. And if it was a day that was sunny, which are, which are few and far between in Seattle, Washington, um, it's beautiful, right. You're out there, it's sunny, and at this lake we would go to, there was this dock, right, that you could swim out to, right. Go out there, sunbathe jump off, do dives, act crazy, whatever it is, right? But it was a good ways away. I can't tell you how far it was, but it was a good ways away, you know, for a 12-year-old especially. So part of kind of growing up and, and kind of a rite of passage was to be able to make it to that dock on your own, right? So I could swim my whole life as early as seven or eight. But swimming that far... Right, and that confidently was something that required another level of of confidence, another level of ability. Right, so it was it was kind of a a a line of demarcation between being a little kid and being a big kid. Right, if you could make it, because at that point your group of friends, you know, some of them could make it. You know, two years earlier, none of us could. Now, it was a point where some kids could make it. And so if you couldn't make it, you were kind of still considered on this side of the line. And so I remember, you know, the summer of my, of my when I was 11 and trying it and panicking, getting, you know, going out. And it's, it's, it's scary. It's like you get there and the further away you get from shore, the scarier it gets. Right. Until you get there. So at 10, 11, I would try it and get like a quarter of the way in panic. Right. Oh my God. You know, and look back and it's like the shore is getting smaller and smaller. You know, people are waving. You can make it. You can make it. Right, Teresa. And I'm looking and I'm like, and then you panic and I go back. So at age 10, 
age 11, I tried several times to do it, right? And my brother was always kind of by me. He's 10 years older than me. He's always kind of by me saying, you can do it. And I knew I wouldn't drown, but you still have that fear. And so, you know, five, six, seven, nine, 10, 11 times I tried. I tried to go out there and got scared and came back. Until, until, until 12 years old, right? This is going to be the day, right? Now, most of my group of friends can make it. I might be the only one left that can't swim out to this damn dock, right? So I get out there, I'm swimming, you know, I pass the, the quarter, the quarter uh, of the waypoint. I'm looking back, I'm still scared. I pass the 40% of the way mark. I'm looking back, I'm still getting scared. But something happens, right, at about halfway, right? I'm looking back, I've gotten further probably than I have any previous time, right? And then I kind of get what I think is halfway, right? And I remember, I remember it like it was yesterday. And I just freaking panic, not to go back, not to quit. I panic to make it. Because at that point, I was halfway. And it was no difference than going back to shore and going to where I was going. It was the same distance to get back to safety or get to greatness. Right? So at that point, I literally hit another gear. Right? Flight or fight, whatever you want to call it. Adrenaline. Whatever you want to call it. I, I All of a sudden, I had this adrenaline rush and I began to swim it. It, it probably wasn't even pretty. It was just like boom, 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 boom. But there was no way I was not going to make it at that point. There was no way. No way. Right, Tony? Once I passed that halfway point, there was no way I was going back. Right? And, and long story short, I, I ended up on the wrong side of the damn dock, away from the ladder. So I got there, tired as hell, reaching for somebody to help me up. They're laughing because they think I'm playing around and I almost drowned. Right? But I made it to the dock. Right? After 11 tries, I made it to the dock. Why? Because I got to the halfway point. Right? So many of us, we have these long, these long lengthy dreams that are far away from us. Right? Lose 50 pounds. You know, get a get a, a MBA, get a get a degree, make the varsity football team, start a business, rekindle, rebuild this relationship that seems lost. Right? And most of us will start several times trying to get to where we want to get to. Right? And we'll 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 go on a diet for a week, right? Or we'll try, you know, to listen to our son or daughter more effectively for a month, right? Or we'll, or we'll go out and start and, and start studying for that test to get into to law school or whatever it is, right? But inevitably, we get fearful, we get afraid, we get, we get uh, lazy, right? And we stop, right? It's too long. Once we realize how long the journey is, and oftentimes we, we think it's long, but we don't know how long it is until we start it. And that scares us and intimidates us, right? Not knowing that that journey has to be taken at some point, right? Like I said yesterday, all you got to do is start walking. You can't stay here. You're not happy here. So start walking. I don't care how far it is. Start walking toward it, right? But what's going to happen is it's far away. It's hard, it's lengthy, it's daunting. But all you gotta do is get halfway for now. Just do that, right? So today when I was working out, I was on round three going into round four of a 10 round circuit that was gonna include 200 deadlifts and 100 burpees when it's all said and done. I was 30, 30 burpees in, 60 deadlifts in only. All I told myself was just get halfway. Get to five. Get to five. And then we'll talk. Right? Right, Bobby? Coach Bobby telling Bobby, get to five. And then we'll talk. Because I don't even think you have the, 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 the right to quit unless you get halfway. 
You don't have the right to give up. Oh, it's too hard. How you know? Get halfway, then talk to me. You ain't tried. I try hard. No, you haven't. Got 30 pounds to lose. I lost five. You ain't tried yet. My daughter and I aren't talking. I sat down. I tried for a week. You ain't tried yet. Get halfway and then talk to me. Right? And what happens at that point is you don't put too much into it. Right? It's easy to quit when you only put 20% in. It's easy to back out, but get 50% in. Get halfway into it and try to quit then. You can't quit then. It's impossible. Right? Invest, invest blood, sweat, and tears in whatever you want and go halfway and tell me you can quit. You can't quit at that point. It's impossible. And so I'm telling you, all you got to do is, is, is like yesterday, right? What I said yesterday is start walking. And when you want to quit, don't look at the whole journey. Don't look at the dock. Don't look at the 10 rounds of, of 20 deadlifts and 10 burpees. Just get halfway. Right? And Chris will tell you, once I got, to, once I got five, I was done. Once I got the five rounds, it was over. All she wrote, I was going to finish. There was no way I was going back online and saying I did five. I would rather say I did three. Right? I would rather tell you I did three rounds out of ten than say I did five. And quit. I would rather tell you that I got a quarter of the way to my goal and gave up than tell you I got halfway and then quit. I always tell my classes, you going to stop with five seconds left? Really? Did all this work, now you're going to stop? No. Once you get halfway, you got to finish it. You got to finish it. They ain't giving out. I would say, I don't run. Right? I did a 5K yesterday. That was a BTY 5K. I don't run. Right? But I do know this. They don't give out 26.1 stickers. Right? You either ran the marathon or you didn't. They don't give out 13.0 half marathon stickers. You either ran the half marathon or you didn't. So if you get halfway, you are a part of us has to finish. A part of your DNA, a part of where you come from has to finish. Right? I always tell the story about our ancestors. If you ain't Native American, but right, if you are, you have you have tremendous strength to draw upon. But if you're not Native American, then your, your people came here from somewhere, right? And you know damn well, they didn't get halfway and quit. So what gives you the right to, to, to not get halfway? At least, to at least get halfway to where you want to go in life. Right? Stop quitting at 20%. Stop quitting at, at 25%. Get halfway and I promise you, get halfway and you're going to finish it. But you got to get to that point. Right? So today I was like, you know what? I'm getting five. I'm getting five. And we'll talk then. I ain't even, I ain't even thinking about quitting until I get five. When I get five, I'm going to finish. Ashley, I'm going to finish. It could have been a thousand burpees. I'm going to finish. If I get five, I'm finishing. Right? Like yesterday, I, I did 4,000 jump ropes, 1,000 abs. At 500 abs, halfway, I was spent, but I was not going to quit at 500. I would rather quit at 400. I would rather quit at 400 than 500. Right? I would rather quit at 40% than halfway. Right? I'm not drowning. Right? I'm, I'm going to the dock. I'm halfway. I'm not going back. Right? And saying I didn't make it again. I'm already halfway. I might as well get the glory. You might as well finish now. I'd rather die on the way to greatness than die going back to safety. That's a good one, right? I'd rather die at the halfway point. I'd rather die trying to be great than die going back to average. Screw that. So whatever you're, whatever you're looking at, and you all want to be great at something. Well, we didn't come into this world average. You, you want a race of 300 million sperm on day one. So day one, you already won the battle against all odds. So we don't come into this world average. We come into this world great. So you have something you want to be great at. 
right? And you've tried probably to be great at that one thing. The problem is you're stopping. You start, you do one lap around the track and you stop, right? The metaphorical track to your, to your goal. It's four laps. It's four laps to start a business. It's four laps to lose 40 pounds. It's four laps to be a great speaker, Coach Bobby. It's four laps to build a great bond with your spouse or your, or your sibling. It's four laps. You done did one about 35 times in your life and stopped. You done did two or, or almost two about 20 times. Do two. Get halfway. And then tell me if you can quit. I promise you, you can't quit. Get halfway. I promise you, you can't quit. The problem is you're scared to get halfway. Get halfway. And then we'll talk. Right? Chris knows me. He was sitting there. He know I'm going to get halfway at least. I teach him that. Right? He big, strong, but he know me. I'm going to get at least halfway before I even think about quitting. And then it's too late to think about quitting. It's too late. I'm already invested. In my head, I'm already telling a story about what I did. I ain't going back now. I ain't quitting now with no story to tell. With no ribbon to hold. With no trophy, invest in what you want in life. Step one. Step two, get halfway. Whatever it takes. Keep grinding. Do one more step, one more lap, one more round. That's what I did. At round one, I was already tired. Do one more round, Bobby. One more round. Now you at two. Do one more round. Now you at three. Do one more round. Now you have four. Do one more round. Now guess what? I'm halfway from the from the shore to the dock. And Chris will tell you, at that point, it kicked in. My adrenaline kicked in. My 47-year-old body fell 27 again. And there was no way I wasn't going to quit. I wasn't going to finish. There was no way I was quitting at that point. I'm going to tell Chris I did seven. I'm going to tell my wife I did eight. I'm going to tell my kids who look up to me that I did nine. Oh, you didn't do 10? I did nine. No, they know daddy. I'm doing 10. If I said 10, I'm doing 10. All right? So your goals, your dream, your vision, get halfway, guys. Just get halfway. And then we can talk about it. And then you can, you can tell me you want to quit. I guarantee my phone won't be ringing. Because you, at that point, you won't want to quit. You're too invested. Too much blood, blood, sweat, and tears involved in it to quit now. All right? All right, guys. So keep fighting for what you want in life. Right? Stop settling for average. We ain't average. You ain't average. I ain't average. Right? The problem is we do what everyone else does. We stop. Right? Before we get halfway. All I'm saying is get halfway. All right, guys. Love you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.